I would just like to to say thank you so much for for joining. I believe that um, it really speaks for the format that uh, we actually have more participants as the uh, uh, than the room can hold. Uh, so that's always a, a good sign. Um, from from my side, um, Bea has already gone over our format. Um, I think it's a, a very nice format to create a safe space and have a discussion where everyday Filipinos can can talk about you know very important issues uh, on the political side, and they can actually discuss it with uh, well with politicians, uh, with those people who have either drafted the bill or uh, where we saw that they were very active in the discussion of the bill. Uh, and uh, we very much like that because we believe as a foundation, uh, having been here for more than 30 years, working in more than 60 countries worldwide, that politics, um, of course, you need politicians. But the most important part of politics is actually engaged citizens who are informed about what's going on, who can have an informed uh, opinion and can make informed decisions uh, also when it comes to political decisions. Um, which they can at least, you know, once in a while do at the election uh, polling booth, uh, but also in their everyday lives. So this is our part in strengthening uh, the citizens of the Philippines. And uh, we very much look forward to further um, series uh, in, this, uh, in this learning um, webcast. Uh, from my side, I very much would like to say thank you to, uh, of course, the Center for Liberalism and Democracy, uh, with whom we are organizing this great event, uh, but also to our speakers, um, Congressman Kit Belmonte, uh, Congressman Mujib Hataman, uh, and of course, Senator Kiko Pangilina. Thank you so much for being here. I would also like to thank our reactors, um, Mark Siapno from the um, Center for um, sorry, for, from Human Rights Commission, uh, Jobel Domingo, Impact Leadership, uh, Chai Financi from Daquila, and of course, uh, Ms. Ms. Cecilia Garuccio from PETA, and Nasif Malavani from the Metro Manila Muslim Trader Association. Um, we believe that this format is actually quite nice. Uh, we all know there's been a lot of webcasts on, on the topic already, um, and, you know, one could say, well, it all has been said, but not yet by us. Uh, but I believe that with the speakers that we have and uh, the reactors that we have, uh, we can actually paint a, a new picture on the topic. And we are very much looking forward to this. I'm also very much looking forward to your questions, uh, to um, the feedback session. Um, thank you so much for being here and thank you so much for making this happen. You're welcome. So for the highlight of our program, I would like to turn you over all to Mr. Elroy Rendor. He is the Executive Director of the Center for Liberalism and Democracy, the Moderate Discussion. Elroy. Thank you, Bea. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us. And thank you for FNF for helping us make this uh, event possible. So uh, without further ado, we have a very uh, long session ahead of us. We have a lot of discussion that we're expecting for this very important bill. So our first speaker I'm very proud to present. He is the representative of the 6th District of Quezon City and serves as the Deputy Minority Leader for this 18th Congress. He is also the Secretary General of the Liberal Party of the Philippines, a champion of affordable housing for the poor and the promotion and protection of human rights. He has distinguished himself as a principled and diligent lawmaker throughout his political career. He has authored and co-authored more than 30 laws. Among these are the establishment of the Department of Human Settlements and Urban Development and the protection of children in situations of armed conflict. Without further ado, I would like to present Congressman Keith Belmonte. Hi, sir. Hi, Elroy. Uh, thank you for inviting me. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say I had no intention of uh, joining any of these forums or discussions. I, it's a debate inside our office whether uh, we should still be discussing the salient points of the bill or we should be talking about uh, moving forward and our actions ahead. However, it was Wolf himself who talked to me, so 
of course I'm here. Um, my task is to, uh, as I understand it, is to present uh, the history of the bill as it went through the house and uh, to present uh, certain features of the bill that are sort of controversial for us. And I will leave it to the better uh, equip, my boss, Senator Kiko, and uh, who has, um, Congressman Mujib Hataman, who has actual experiences in the uh, um, confronting terrorism in, the, in Mindanao uh, to explain other features of the bill. So without further ado, uh, um, a brief history of the bill. It was first filed in the 17th Congress to replace the 2002 Human Securities Act, uh, but it did not move past deliberations in the committee's technical working group. Uh, in the 18th Congress, it was uh, pushed again, this time uh, with a stronger push, kasi anim uh, powerful House leaders and proponents nito. Um, including uh, the author, the original author, Congressman Rufi Biason. Okay. Um, to make the bill move faster, instead of going through the normal process, like to go through a technical working group, the joint committee, uh, there was a joint committee hearing of the Committee of Public Order and Safety and the Committee on National Defense. And it went through, both committees held um, five or six actual hearings on the bill. And uh, no less than the National Security uh, Advisor and uh, a lot of uh, executives in the security establishment always participated. Um, so without going through a TWG, the bill was called, the six bills were consolidated into one. And in isa isa po namin, it went through the feature, uh, um, line by line deliberations on the points. Ang maganda nito, um, although it was a tedious process, we were coming together to form something that uh, could be acceptable or would be acceptable, uh, including yung mga concerns that are raised now. However, all of a sudden, in the middle of uh, the COVID pandemic, um, we were, uh, and on the, the reason that the IATF was flagging that we will be in default of our international obligations, um, the committee, uh, in, including all ex official members, voted to, uh, to uh, forego the bill that we were debating on and yung pinaghirapan for two congresses at pinag-uusapan uh, pinag line by line to just adapt in toto yung Senate version of the bill. And this was passed in uh, 29, uh, May 29, right, May 29. Three days later, tama ba yun? Three days later, yeah, ano, four days later, the House passed this on uh, second reading and uh, on June 3, we passed it on third reading. Um, without uh, only five interpolators, without any amendments allowed, and uh, and yet it was passed. And yet it was passed. Okay. Okay. Um, before I go to the, um, and it was passed very swiftly because the president certified this measure as urgent. The main reason they pointed out was because of our international financial obligations. During the deliberations, we were asking, but we are in, a, there are many of our international obligations, uh, in particular in reference to human rights, in reference to maritime, in reference to transport, na also equally urgent, but we weren't in a hurry to pass. And in fact, even the national security establishment means anang nagaharang don sa mga bills na to. Um, also, we had the already existing Human Securities Act. Um, and our obligation to AMLAC, I think just two days ago, 
the deadline as expounded by the, the head of AMLA was October of this year. And because of COVID, it was extended to February of next year. Ibig sabihin, there was enough time given the swiftness of the way the House works on priority bills to um, subject the bill to more deliberations. Pero instead, finas break po namin ito and it has passed. And it is just awaiting uh, the signature of the President to bring it into law. Okay. Um, the, the second part of my discussion is supposed to be the contentious provisions as I see it. Okay. Basically, the provisions of the bill as written, as it is written now, from my point of view, is it is overbroad and uh, can be unconstitutional. Okay. Next slide. Okay. First of all, Section 4. Ang unang interpretation ko ng Section 4 was even the definition itself was so broad na acts punishable under the revised penal code if you establish the intent to, for example, cause fear uh, on, a, on the population or a segment of the population for political purposes, pwede nang ma-establish na terrorism yun. Um, I, I, initial perusal ko, parang wow, overbroad nga siya. And then I sort of researched and realized ko, this is the actual international definition then ng terrorism established under so many jurisdictions. Ang problema ko lang dito, by these definitions, yung uh, mga namamatay sa tokhang, yung mga pinapatay dahil sa um, anti-drug campaign, na sinasabi ng presidente or sinasabi ng kung sino-sinong tao about uh, in sort of encouraging this, ay eh, papasok na rin sa definition ng terrorism. And uh, so many other scopes of activities pwede pumasok sa scope of terrorism. Second, ang sinasabi nilang safeguard, the provided by safeguard that doesn't allow that doesn't allow uh, expression of free speech, etc., to uh, public assembly to be considered under terrorism is only covered by Section 4. This doesn't cover the other sections of the bill. Section 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, which are threats, preparation, conspir conspiring, proposal to commit terror, next slide, uh, inciting recruitment, uh, foreign terrorist participation, uh, material support. All of these parts are not covered by the provided by provision, which safeguard, which is a safeguard against uh, uh, legitimate expressions of free speech and uh, public assembly and public organization. The proviso is only under Section 4. All these others, pwede. So what am I saying? For example, lang, um, lagi kang nagsasalita na um, dapat itong mga to ay dapat pinapatay, dapat itong mga to ay wala nang silbi sa lipunan, dapat ma mawala na sila sa lipunan, and then nangyayari yun. Nagkaamatayan silang lahat. Under Section 9 of the bill, covered ka ng inciting to terrorism. And under the other provisions of the law, um, being an accessory, being designated, being proscribed, or uh, being detained without a warrant of arrest, pwede ka nang makulong. Okay. okay. Um, let's go to the, the salient features of being, there are three ways, at least three ways na pwede kang madali under the anti-terrorism uh, law. Uh, na ma-designate ka or ma-proscribe ka as a terrorist. Number one, sinabi ng UN Security Council based on their consolidated list na terrorista ka. Number two, another jurisdiction 
China, America, Australia ang nagsabi na terrorist ka or Malaysia or Indonesia nagsabi na terrorist ka at sinabi nila sa Pilipinas. And thirdly, yung uh, members mismo ng Anti-Terrorist Council, the members mismo ng Anti-Terrorist Council who are uh, senior members of the executive under the members of the National Security Council, despite our, um, them saying that they have no quasi-judicial powers, can themselves, upon finding probable cause, designate you as a terrorist. Uh, the bill supposedly provides due process. However, under the Constitution, a person may be, det uh, may be detained. The let's go back to, uh, let's go back one more slide. I'm sorry. Okay. okay. Going back to the designation by the ATC. Ang ibig sabihin ho nito, kung ang, may, ang uh, isang driver, for example, uh, ng Grab, may nasakay na pasahero na accidentally at di naman niya alam ay uh, may planong terrorist act. Or for example, isang uh, um, student organization, ay yung isang miyembro nila ay sumali uh, sa isang designated terrorist organization. By the designation ng Anti-Terrorist Council or by the designation ng mga law enforcement officials, pwede ka nang mag-detain ng 14 days without judicial warrant. Section 25 designate uh, Section 25 means a designation of a terrorist individual or groups or, or, or organizations enumerates the three modes of designation. You can be through the, you, um, the, the Security Council, another jurisdiction, or the ATC. If you are designated by the ATC, ang ibig sabihin nito, the ATC can tell, you, can tell the AMLAC that you are a designated terrorist and the Anti-Money Laundering Council can motoproprio freeze your assets. So um, let me go back to the three features. You can be designated, you can be proscribed, or you can be arrested without warrant. Designation means that, uh, as already discussed, pag na-designate ka, pwede nang ma-freeze yung assets mo. The next point is proscription. Pag na-proscribe ka naman, ang mangyayari sa'yo, pwede kang uh, dadalhin, um, ang pwedeng mangyari sa'yo is dadalhin ng ATC sa Court of Appeals. And sa Court of Appeals, may 72 hours sila para sabi uh, may 72 hours para sabihin na yung organization mo or yung grupo mo ay prescribed and then my six my uh, 60, uh, 6 months para ma decide nila kung talagang i-proscribe kayo and 3 years para mawala yung prescription niyo and then the last point is yung warrantless arrest under the warrantless arrest uh, the ATC authorizes law enforcers to take custody of any suspect of, of a terrorist act without warrant. Law en the law enforcer has 14 days to deliver the suspect to a judicial authority. Warrantless arrest, however, under our um, rules of court, only authorizes you to be arrested if you are under if you are caught in flagrante delicto or the arresting officer has the sufficient knowledge that the crime is being committed and you are committing it, or an escapee. Ang basic na points lang po natin dito is that uh, the, mere, the bill was not merely intended to bring actual terrorists to justice. It is intended to widen the net of who can be considered as terrorists. It is intended to circumvent the constitutional and legal structures that keep the vast powers of the state in check on the pretext of fighting terrorism. Thank you for that. I'm sorry, medyo um, short yung preparation. 
Um, I think mas maganda siguro uh, we pass this on to the next speakers and then ayusin po natin ito sa open forum po natin pagkatapos. Elroy, thank you very thank much. You, thank you, Kong Pete. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, Kong Pete, for explaining the different contentious points of the bill. No? I hope uh, our viewers from Zoom and from our Facebook Live were able to understand uh, the reason why we're fighting uh, to jump the ATB. Kong Kit explained most of the contentious points. If you have any questions to our, uh, to our speakers, you may raise them in our chat uh, Q&A box in the Zoom and in the chat for Facebook. Later, you will be checking uh, the questions that you post. You'll be choosing them in the open forum. Kongkit is also one of the 38 representatives who voted for no uh, in the bill. So if you have any, uh, if you know the stance of your representative, I hope you check uh, where they stand on the bill and hopefully you write to them and check uh, if your values align with them.